Okay, 4C. How many moles of carbon dioxide, right, so blank numbers of moles of CO2, are made from combusting 5 moles of oxygen with 7 moles of ethanol? All right. Anytime you're given two amounts, it's a clue, uh, two amounts of reactants, that it's going to be a limiting reactant problem. Because we don't know which one of these is going to run out first. But if we know the moles of this, can't we figure out the moles of product? Yeah. And if we know the moles of this, can't we figure out the moles of product using the mole ratios? This is 1 to 2. This is 3 to 2. So my favorite way of finding limiting reactants is find out how many moles of product or how much product you make for each one. Whichever one gives you least, the least amount, is going to be um, the limiting reactant. And that's the one that's the most you can make. Just like if you had two slices of cheese and a thousand pieces of bread. These are really ugly pieces of bread, okay, right? Uh, with a, so maybe let's just let's make this one, two, three, four, six pieces of bread. If I had six pieces of bread, uh, I could, for this one, how many sandwiches can I make? I can only make two sandwiches. And how many products of this can I make? I can make two, four, six sandwiches. But I'm limited by the one that runs out first, okay? And the way to find out is you have to go into moles and convert to the moles of the other and see how many moles of product. And this is the number of sandwiches. I can't make more than two sandwiches with my two slices of cheese, okay? Who cares? I have enough for the other one, but that doesn't matter. So this is my limiting reactant. This is how much I can make. So let's find out how many moles of uh, CO2 I can make with seven moles of ethanol and three moles of O2. So let's start it out. It's is a mole ratio. So start off with what you have. Seven moles of C2H6O. And let's use our conversion factor to find the moles of CO2. Okay, so what units go down here? Well, I have the same as up here moles of C2H6O. And what units go up here? The ones over here. Let's take a look at the ratio. What is the ratio between moles of C2H6O and CO2? It's one of these. For every one mole of these, I end up with two moles of these. So seven times two. That gives me 14 possible moles of CO2. Okay, so that's the first one. Now let's see the O2. Start out with our 5 moles of O2. We'll set up our conversion factor again, and we'll see what we end up with for moles of CO2. Moles of O2 on the bottom, and then moles of CO2 on the top. What's the ratio? For every 2 moles of CO2, there are three moles of O2. So this is a nice one that argues why we should use conversion factors, because sometimes the with these, it makes you can do it in your head. But with this, it gets a little tricky. Okay? And also, conversion factors keep you from getting lost. It's easy to get lost. So, 5 times 2 divided by 3. What is that? 10 divided by 3. It's like 3.33. We'll call it 3.33. Okay? Sound good? Which one of these gives us the least number of sandwiches, the least number of moles of product? Why, this gives us a lot, but this is the least amount. Can we make more than this? Absolutely not. So this is how much we can make because who's the limiting reactant? O2 is the limiting reactant. And the way you can find it is by finding the moles of product or the grams of product of, of from each reactant, and the one that's the least is going to be the limiting reactant, most due to the limiting reactant. All right? That's the trick. Anytime you get two of them, just find the product, the least amount of one, the one with the least amount of product is it. All right, good luck.